Okay, now uh, I will discuss about the synthesis of uh, value added chemicals and fuel additives from renewable resources like biomass using heterogeneous catalyst. Now, I will discuss two major things why uh, biomass, because we know that biomass is a major renewable source that we can use as a, a raw material for any um, chemical synthesis like uh, <coughs> EMF, a, a, HMF, LL, EL, like that. And uh, another advantage is that if we use this biomass, it will reduce the pollution because this is a renewable resource. And the second issue that we will discuss that utilization of uh, heterogeneous catalyst, because we know that this uh, process is very complicated. It is not a simple reaction. It, we have to control reaction temperature, time and uh, heating mode and other things. And it involves, uh, there are different type of reactions like uh, polymerization, isomerization, dehydration. These type of reactions are involved in this process. And it is basically a catalytic process and acids are used as catalysts. Mostly bone state acid and Lewis acids are used. <coughs> but there are some disadvantages also. Disadvantage of this uh, homogeneous catalyst because they are very difficult to separate. Uh, uh, after getting a uh, product, we have to separate it from the reacting mixer. That is very difficult. Another thing is, this is somewhat corrosive when we are using sulfuric acid because we know that sulfuric acid is very much corrosive in nature. So whenever we are using sulfuric acid as our catalyst, we have to take care about the material of construction. That is another uh, issue for using sulfuric acid. So this can be take, taken care by using a heterogeneous catalyst. So heterogeneous catalyst we can use, but uh, <clears throat> there are some other disadvantages also because or heterogeneous catalyst, the surface area is uh, comparatively low because they are not mixing homogeneously with the reacting mixer. So uh, rate of reaction is much lesser compared to the homogeneous catalyst. That is one disadvantage. Another disadvantage is that this is uh, <coughs> synthesis of this uh, catalyst somewhat uh, costly because uh, it takes some <coughs> Uh, expensive method and uh, that's why it is costly and it takes a long time also. That is another disadvantage. So what we do in our research, we have synthesized some more efficient and inexpensive heterogeneous catalyst. This is, uh, uh, these catalysts are developed by these researchers. Uh, it is based on silica and titanium based supported catalyst. But for uh, supported catalyst, one disadvantage already I have said that surface area is more. So we have to uh, look for some catalyst which has larger surface area. So our uh, research is uh, mainly uh, targeted to uh, develop this MOS2 or WS2 as catalyst, which has higher surface area as well as uh, sufficient acid site, which is responsible for mm, uh, catalyst, catalytic reaction. And here what we have done, we have synthesized uh, this uh, MOS2 or WS2 uh, catalyst and we have uh, produced EMF and EL. And we synthesize catalyst uh, with a very simple process and uh, uh, we have used uh, 600 degree centigrade in a tubular furnace using elemental tungsten and sulfur. And we have obtained multi-layer flake sheets of WS2. If you see this, this method is very simple method compared to any other uh, supported material synthesis method. So this is a very simple method. Only we are using uh, elemental uh, tungsten and sulfur as a raw material. And we are keeping inside the uh, tubular furnace at this particular temperature, 600. 
and we are getting multi-layer flex sheets. And the advantage of this uh, flex and sheet, multi-layer uh, flex and sheet is that it has large surface area compared to any supported uh, catalyst. After this synthesis, what we have done, we have uh, characterized this uh, catalyst because we have to check whatever we are, uh, uh, we have uh, catalyst synthesized, we have to check that whether it is suitable or not. That is done by um, textural and morphological properties testing and uh, that uh, acid side test. So this is basically the, uh, if, if you see these are the layered uh, structure where we have sulfur and uh, tungsten and this is a uh, x-ray diffraction uh, graph uh, pattern you can see and here also if you see these are the uh, some pictorial representation this is uh, done by some software where we can see these planes are there and whatever we, we are claiming um, that we can check through time analysis and these are the TEM uh, micrograph, but it is not, it may not be visible properly, but if you check from where we can confirm that these are uh, uh, multi-layered structure. And also we can check SAAT pattern here. From where we can check we can our, uh, or we can confirm our claims. This is another analysis, uh, FECM images and uh, elemental analysis also we have done. And here also we have done elemental mapping. If, if we can see in E and F that tungsten and sulfur distribution is almost uniform. So we can claim that this is uh, sulfur and uh, uh, tungsten are uniformly distributed. And at the same time, we have to check whether this uh, acid uh, properties are there because this is mostly responsible for catalytic reaction. So we have tested that using ammonia TPD, ammonia digestion TPD, and we have found that this much of total uh, acid, acidity, 0.164 uh, uh, millimole per gram. Out of that, this much is uh, weak acid, 0 0.05 and 0 0.004 mole per gram, millimole per gram is. Uh, moderate acid and 0.11 is strong acid. So we can claim that this may be suitable for uh, this uh, bio, bio, <coughs> biomass conversion because uh, it, it has some acidic sites. Then we have tested uh, for uh, bio, uh, fructose conversion mainly. We have considered fructose as our raw material. This is uh, one material. Uh, from uh, you will get from any biomass. And we have found that 100% uh, conversion and around 62% EMF yield with uh, this much uh, time and temperature, uh, 160 degrees uh, temperature and 15 minutes time. And this is our experimental procedure where we have tested the effect of uh, different parameters, say such as the uh, concentration of uh, catalyst, concentration of uh, raw material, concentration of uh, uh, or, um, ethanol, the, then time and the effect of temperature also. So, so for that, we have done uh, different experiment in the range of uh, 0.1 to 0.8 millimole. Uh, uh, tungsten sulfide and with seven to uh, three to seven milligram ethanol and uh, this much of uh, raw material uh, 0.25 to 1.5 millimole fructose and temperature range we use 100 to 160 degrees centigrade because uh, we we have found uh, by uh, trial and error method that below 100 degree centigrade it is not effective the conversion is not effective. So that's why we have started from 100 degree centigrade. And similarly, we have checked how uh, the conversion is changing with, or how the concentration is changing with time. So we have considered uh, temperature range 30 second to 180 minute. And our reactor, uh, it can withstand up to this much 
pressure 20 bar and 180 degree centigrade. And we have uh, calculated uh, yield and conversion using this formula. These are the very common formula. We have used these formulas for calculating uh, fructose conversion, HMF yield, EMF yield, and EL yield in, in terms of percentage. And now uh, quickly I'll go through the results. So this is the effect of temperature. As I said that we have started our experiment uh, with uh, 100 degree centigrade below that uh, it, it was not effective. So we have uh, checked uh, the production. Uh, we have uh, measured the concentration uh, of uh, different components. Uh, at 100 degree, you can see that conversion is almost uh, 45 or something, then it is increasing with time. And at around uh, 160 degree centigrade or 150 degree centigrade, it is almost 100 degree, 100% uh, conversion is there. Similarly, if HMF yield and EMF yield, EL yield, those are also measured. If we see HMF yield, it is increasing initially, then again decreasing. So whenever you have HMF as your desired product, you have to uh, maintain this temperature, say 130 degree centigrade. If you go beyond that temperature, then your uh, HMF uh, conversion will reduce, uh, HMF yield will reduce because it will convert it to some other product. Similarly, whenever you have EMF as your uh, product, then you can increase the temperature up to uh, this portion, 150 or 160 degree centigrade, then it will be almost constant. You can use uh, 160 degrees uh, centigrade temperature for the reaction. Similarly, whenever you are considering EL as your uh, desired product, then if you see this is at this temperature range, it is very uh, uh, low. The uh, yield is very low because we have done this experiment with this much of uh, catalyst and with this uh, this much of time. So. In some cases, you have to increase the uh, time or you have to increase the catalyst concentration, then you, you may get some better result. So whatever I have discussed, that's the same thing, it is there. I, and here also we have, I have already discussed all those things. Uh, I'll quickly move to this thing. Then we'll check the effect of time. So here also you can see that uh, we have started with uh, zero time and continued up to uh, 180 degree, uh, 180 minute. And if we check almost 100% uh, conversion is done within 15 minutes. Because this, is, this reaction is very fast reaction within 15 minutes, the reaction is completed. And whenever you have, uh, EMF as your product, then if you see, if you go beyond this time, 15 or 20 minutes time, then again, the concentration is decreasing. So whenever you have EMF as your de desired product, you have to do the experiment or you have to uh, control your time up to this portion, 15 uh, minutes or 20 minutes. If you go beyond that, then concentration again will reduce. Similarly, if you check, HMF yield again initially increased, then again decreasing. But uh, EL yield is increasing. Here it is uh, increasing up to almost 20%. And for all those things, we are considering this reaction condition for uh, one mole fructose, 0.3 mole uh, catalyst, uh, 5 mole ethanol, uh, 5 ml ethanol, and temperature 160 degree, and this much of. Uh, uh, starting speed, one uh, 300 RPM. So same thing we have discussed there. And here from uh, composition analysis, we, we will get different type of comp uh, composition. And they, they will give you some idea about which reaction path it is following. If you see this uh, different uh, composition number, they are, uh, if, I will go to the next slide. Say, suppose uh, composition analysis is giving us uh, this uh, 
7 composition 7 so we can say that whenever uh, component 6 is converted to component 4 there may be it may be follow this path similarly if you have say 9 comp composition in your uh, uh, resulting product so you can see that this may be that it it has follows it, this path okay so from composition you can uh, case that which path is followed so that is important because that will give you some idea about which reaction path it follows so now uh, i will discuss about the uh, catalyst concentration effect of catalyst concentration and if you see whenever we are uh, increasing the catalyst concentration the fructose concentration uh, conversion is almost same here the emf yield is initially increasing then again it is decreasing and for hmf yield it is again it is decreasing and el yield it is increasing little bit but overall you can see that it has very less effect the catalyst concentration has very less effect uh, uh, in this reaction so we can consider the as small as cat, uh, say 0.1 mole is sufficient millimole is sufficient and in this case it is decreasing if you see uh, hmf yield is decreasing there are some reasons same thing i have discussed here that it is almost 90 percent with uh, Point, even with 0.1 millimole catalyst. Okay, now uh, I will discuss about the reactant concentration. Again, if you check, we are uh, using reactant concentration from 0.25 to 1.5 uh, millimole. And here also, there is almost no effect. If you see for all this, uh, there is no effect only for it el it is uh, reducing little bit because whenever you are uh, this concentration uh, we are increasing the reactant concentration the el uh, yield is reducing little bit because we have to maintain proper a uh, catalyst to a reactant ratio the, some optimum ratio will be there otherwise the uh, production will be less. The so same thing uh, we have discussed in the last slide. Now, overall, we can see that 0 0.3 mole of uh, this uh, WS2 catalyst and 1 mole of reactant fructose conversion has found to be optimum for EMA production at 160 degree and 15 minutes. Now, we will see that uh, effect of ethanol volume and alcohol chain. Whenever we are using this uh, reacting system, we are using ethanol as a, uh, as a solvent as well as one uh, reactant. So we will check whether if, the, uh, if ethanol volume has any effect on the reaction as well as the uh, alcohol chain length has any uh, effect on the reaction. So what we have done, we have tested uh, this uh, reaction with three to seven milliliter of ethanol. And if we see this, the result, the conversion here also, there is no effect. For all cases, if you see, there is no, almost there is no effect. So overall, we can see that there is uh, no effect here only it is reducing from 63 to 62 percent you can say there is no effect here and another thing we have tested also that uh, if uh, the length of uh, the alcohol has any effect uh, initially one study was done by co etel and they have found their uh, and we have also uh, tested and if you see this result that for different uh, alcohol, semi-ethanol, ethanol, 1-propanol, butanol, pentanol, this conversion is almost same. There is no effect. And here, if you see for 
this uh, food crop yield it is highest at uh, with uh, ethanol hmf yield again uh, it is increasing with the chain line but not much but it is increasing ester yield is decreasing initially it was high with methanol it was high and it is decreasing with chain line so overall we can see that uh, for uh, conversion there is no effect emf uh, yield also it is increasing little bit ester also it is decreasing and now we check the recyclability of the catalyst because uh, this is one important parameter whenever you are uh, using any heterogeneous catalyst you have to uh, recycle it and if it is not recyclable then it will increase your production cost so we have done uh, some experiment to check it whether it is recyclable or not so we have done five cycle uh, uh, experiment here also and we found that uh, again that conversion is uh, almost same it is not decreasing much and uh, emf yield also it is decreasing but not much for uh, hmf and emf yield it is also same almost same there is no decrease even after five cycle so you can use this catalyst um, at least up up to five cycle without any change in catalytic activity so if you have any uh, uh, if you have any query you can check this uh, papers or the supported information so we have given the composition analysis and those things in the supporting information if if you are interested you can check it and we have compared our result with uh, previous uh, study and what we have found that our uh, result is almost comparable with the other result it, um, last uh, two are our study and these are the these four reference are there we have compared with their result and we if we see here we have 56% emf yield highest one and uh, 62 percent for this one only the time is different here it is 30 uh, minute time here it is 15 minute time. so they are almost uh, uh, same as the previous razor so if you have any question you can ask thank you